Manners, Mel, New York, baby, New York, uh, reunited here. A place where we've seen another cracker of a game, a very tight one between Bangladesh and South Africa. Uh, I think we've seen enough here at this uh, venue, Manners, to, to conclude that it's probably one of the most difficult pitches to get your head around. You've got to say, it's not a T20 pitch, is it? As a, as a lover, it is a T20 pitch, but as a lover of low scoring games, I feel like all my Christmases have come at once. <laughs> it wasn't what I was expecting, but you know, to spend 11 days here and to, to do six games in New York um, and, and to watch batsmen have to struggle, do you know what? My other sport is golf, and, and I, I, I hate it when people complain about professionals struggling on a really hard course and you know, shooting 82. Mm. Um, but sometimes you have to do that, and I, I've loved it. I've loved, the games have been really exciting. You know what's fascinating for me, though, Mel? Is that what's fascinating? The, the, it, it, I am fascinated by this. I'm surprised, actually, is that all the players that, that we've spoken to after every one of these games None of them have complained. I know they're no. not allowed to. <laughs> obviously. No, they are allowed. No, they are allowed to. Well, they can. No, not really. But, you know, they've also... I mean, Heinrich Klaassen, mm. who hits the ball... What's his career strike rate? 180? 5,736, yeah. <laughs> I believe. He said, he said it's still entertaining cricket. It's still oh, great. A low-scoring thriller is uh, for sometimes more exciting than a high-scoring thriller just because the yeah. stakes seem so much more ridiculous. I, I thought... But what I thought was interesting, you know, we talk about um, teams, uh, players talk about assessing the conditions and adapting, and it's so hum ha, boring, boring when they do. So it's become a real just cliche of something to talk about. But what I thought was interesting about Heinrich Klassen was he said that, that David Miller had really figured out that you had to bat like it was the middle overs of a 50 over match. And then Heinrich Klassen himself was saying, and then that changed. The, the actual technique of batting, that you actually have a, a much tighter technique and, and that was the best way to go about it. I found all of that fascinating because these guys are having to think about it much more than I, I think they've had to think about how they bat in T20 cricket for probably quite a long time. I think the problem with this uh, talk of adaptation and assessing conditions is, you know, when, when it's a matter of fast bowlers finding the right length, and you know, and, and is that length two foot fuller than <laughs> six yards? I mean, it's just sort of slightly beyond uh, over, uh, my, over my head anyway. Um, but here, it was interesting talking to Tristan Stubbs as well, because he said, he explained it in very simple terms. He said, when you're under pressure, there's two ways as a young batsman that you learn how to release that pressure. It's rotating strike and there's two ways to do that. There's a dab to third man and there's the block into the covers or through square leg. And, and it's a block, and these bats are now, they don't have to hit the ball, you're playing within yourself, you're rotating the strike. He said those two things were so hard here because you try to dab it down to third man and it just get caught up in the, in the long grass. And if you did try to just block it through the covers and hit the sweepers on either side or through mm -hmm. the leg side, again, it stopped and the field was able to get there. So he said, you know, you, you had to hit the ball. It's not what you want to do when you're 20 for four or 12 for four as South Africa were. You want to just push and dab and rotate the strike, and, and it was really hard to do that. So it wasn't just the pitch. I mean, we've seen yeah. worse pitches, haven't we? Yeah, we didn't see anybody yeah. hitting the grill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We see, we see worse pitches. Uh, I get the, the combination of the pitch and the outfield, I think those two things together is what has made it particularly challenging, but I don't mind that. I don't mind them having to, to fix it. Uh, one thing about being here as well, I, I've seen pictures of it, and... Um, it looks great, but she's sitting here with the atmosphere around. And honestly, the Bangladesh fans today, boy, did they show up. Uh, yesterday, of course, India, Pakistan. It is a great stadium. And it's such a shame that it's being knocked down in so many ways because it does, I, it does generate a serious atmosphere here. It's a, it's a giant Meccano set. This is not going to be knocked down. They're going to... Yeah. Um, Dismantle. gently dismantle it. Apparently it'll take a month to dismantle it and they put it on the back of uh, sort of 120 trucks and take it to the next super event and put it up uh, where they have a Grand Prix. So it is, yeah. it is, I, it is staggering. I, I couldn't imagine it. It's like the world's biggest Meccano set. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's an incredible achievement, you know, the, and the, 
the catering, um, the, the, the air conditioning. I mean, just over there, there's like 20 huge giant air conditioning tubes in the machine. The cost, 35 yeah. million, 35 million dollars. Um, so there's a lot to recoup for the ICC, and it's, I mean, mm. this is your area of expertise rather than mine. It's not just recouping the cost of erecting this stadium. Um, it's the cost of investing in bringing the game, the World Cup, yeah. to America, particularly to New York. And yeah. the other thing that everyone said, by the way, played here, is that the, the atmosphere and the noise uh, has been fantastic. It, it really has. It. I, I mean, really noticed it. Didn't they recoup 23 million from yesterday's game? Uh, just in the. Just in the VIP suites. In the uh, in they, the India Pakistan game. No, I think they ten thousand dollars. I know. People paid ten thousand dollars. I heard they recouped twenty three million yesterday. Wow, I didn't know that. Uh, oh, wow. That that's what I hear. So there you go. That says something, doesn't it? About there's a story well, okay. now that um, one one person mm. bought sixty yeah, of those ten thousand dollars tickets. Yeah. One person. So ten thousand dollars, and 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 apart from all you can eat, uh, and a great view, you also get to rub shoulders with uh, the ambassadors, Ricky Ponting, Yuvraj Singh, Chris Gale, um, and uh, you know nothing more that a, a wealthy cricket lover likes than. <laughs> to be fair, they've got great shoulders, right? Yeah, well, well, I suppose so. Yeah, <laughs> rubbing them. Imagine being, imagine, imagine calling. Okay, I suppose some family, but imagine calling fifty of your best mates and saying, "I got you a ten thousand dollar ticket for the Man, India Pakistan. I match. wish I knew those people and I'd ask them for the money for something else. I, I told you my taxi driver on the way here yesterday bought a ticket for three hundred and fifty dollars and sold it for four thousand dollars. Why didn't he buy two? Yeah I know. Well I might have got it in the ballot but then paid got the for three fifty so look it's been it's been incredible. Uh, it's certainly been an experience. We've got another couple of games here as well. Uh, and I, I guess the, the one that I'm really looking forward to is is uh, is, is the India USA match, which mm, mm. before the tournament started, you'd have gone, eh, right? You kind of go, eh, oh, well, well, whatever. Uh, but now that match is really fascinating, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Um, and do, do you know, I think the point about one of the point, many points about these conditions is that it brings teams even closer. It's always been said that T20 cricket brings teams closer together anyway, but but here, I mean, it just sounds so ridiculous, but, you know, it, normally you'd hear a, a team saying, like, oh, we thought we were maybe 20 short or, you know, 15, 20, 25 short. Here they're talking about we thought we were maybe five or six runs short. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's like every single, oh, old saying in the book, and every single run counts. It but really here, does, yeah. They count double. The, the other thing that I think is going to be fascinating for that, though, is that with the USA having done so well, with them being a genuine chance of actually making it through to the next stage, the Super 8, and with the way they've been trying so hard to, to the ICC, you know, can cricket crack America and everything else, will there be more interest in the local media about this USA side? Is it? Is this going to be the thing now that they're playing India and it's the you know them against the biggest team in the world, all of that kind of thing, almost you know, that that kind of thing. Is that going to make a difference? Because I think this game could be quite key in in how it does. People in this country love winners, right? Yeah. They love being able to do the USA. USA. <laughs> oh. So and, and that's you know they've got a team that they can do that for now more than they could before. Well, um, you know, I think we've moved very, very quickly on from uh, Americans not knowing they had a cricket team yes. to, to now knowing that not only do they have one, it's a very good one. Um, I, 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 I'm sure that'll happen. Um, I, and I, I just wonder whether the New York Times, which, oh. um, will, which has been running a number of really yes. good feature articles, but um, the one after the India-Pakistan game concluded with uh, the, the result, which was that India beat Pakistan by 119 to 113. <laughs> so, that, I, but that, that makes sense, doesn't yes. it? It makes sense it's that you've got to there. score more runs than your opponent. It makes perfect sense. I, I think it's, a, it's an interesting thing. I will, we'll have to see who shows up in the press box uh, on, the, on that day. I, I do, honestly. I think there'll, there'll be a lot, lot more interest. Mm. Um, and 
uh, I, I, Mel, I was skeptical about whether uh, cricket could could really take off and become a major factor in the States before this trip. Um, I, I'm still not convinced, but I'm no longer the the skeptic that I was. Oh wow! If you can if you can knock the yeah. skeptic out of manners, you can do everything. Where are you off to next? I'm heading back to Cape Town, uh, taking away a lot of lot of memories, things that I have always wanted to do, bucket list things that I never thought I would do. Went up the Empire State Building, went to the 9/11 Memorial. Um, uh, Statue of Liberty. I never thought I'd get to the, the, the States. I'd actually given up. It was uh, my, one of the few cities in the whole world that was on my, my bucket list. The last one remaining, and I think that T20 Cricket and the T20 World Cup can sort this out as well, is Tokyo. Because <laughs> Japan cricket's on the rise, yeah, Mel. It is. It's big time. Yeah. I think that this could become a thing. Let's move the T20 Cricket, T20 World Cup around the world and um, I, I'm, a, I'm a big advocate for Tokyo <laughs> before I retire. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.